Hi there, thanks for joining me today. I'm Jackie and if you joined me for my last video you would have seen me create this acrylic paint pour on a canvas. I'm really happy with the results. It was my very first acrylic paint pour. Learned a lot from it. Didn't do it all right but at the same time I got a result that to me is so interesting. So I want to try a second one and in this one I'm going to try it on floor tile. So this is just scrap floor tile and I want to see how the acrylic paint pour works on this surface because I'd really like to try acrylic paint pouring on rocks and the surface of tile is similar to a rock or a smooth rock so I want to see how that works. So join me for this video and I'll see how I make out with my second attempt at an acrylic paint pour. So here I am back again doing some more experimenting with acrylic paint pouring. I am wanting to try acrylic paint pouring on old tiles. So I've taken two tiles. These are leftover pieces from floor tiling. One I'm just doing it directly onto the tile. The other one I have put a coat of white paint on it just to see if it makes any difference in the way it works. Now I'm going to try, in my last video I tried the um, direct pouring, or the dirty pouring, and in this one I'm going to try a direct pour. So I have all of my same paints that I used last time. Uh oh, I'm getting a bit of clumping in this paint. So if you get any clumping like that, take it out. It's probably because this has been that was a thicker paint when I started, so there was probably a clump that didn't get mixed up. Now again, if you want to see all of the materials that I use in this, you can check in the description down below. So I'm going to put a little bit of silicone in each little color of paint in the hopes that that will help some cells come out, which are bubbles. So give that a little mix. We'll mix, we'll mix, mix, and mix. So I have my five colors that I'm using here, and I'm going to just directly pour onto the tile. So this one I'm going to try direct pour. Do a little bit here in the corners. And that's a titanium white. And then I have a phalo blue. And an aqua green. I love this aqua green. I'm going to put a big bit of that there. Because I would love to have that kind of take over in this piece. And some turquoise. Everything's better with turquoise. Let's see what will happen here. And then I'm going to try some gold. A little bit of gold. Just streaking through it to add some interest. Now I'll let those colors kind of go together here. Just do some tilting to let them flow together. See there was a little bit of problem in that aqua green where I had some clumping happening. I think that's that was a thick paint when I went to mix it. So if you get clumps like that just have to take them out. This is where your craft, your craft tweezers come in handy because I don't want big clumps in my piece. So I'm, it, the reason why I really wanted to try this on tile is that I'm quite interested in doing some acrylic paint pouring, acrylic paint pouring on rocks, and then seeing if I can incorporate some of those rocks with my sea glass mosaic art. 
So that has prompted me to try this on tile, to see how it works on tile. I'm going to try this bit where you blow through the straw to mix the colors and help them flow together. And some tilting. And I'm letting it all drip down onto some high gloss photo paper. And we'll see if there's anything interesting that I can use with the leftover drips. I'm getting quite a bit of aqua green in this one, which I love. Just getting some really interesting patterns happening as the colors flow together. It seems to be sticking to the tile really nicely. So I will see what I come up with in the end. And just that little streak of gold through there is quite interesting. Unfortunately, my green paint is being a bit problematic with these clumps. So I'll have to pick those out. But that's what's so interesting to me about this is it's so organic what happens with the paint. So neat. And I like how I got all this white right here. So now I'm going to try my bit with the butane torch again. I dripped some onto this one, but that won't hurt because I'm going to be covering that anyway. This is messy business. So if you don't, if you learn anything from me, learn that acrylic paint pouring is messy. There's a cautionary note. I just set my photo paper that's underneath on fire. Be careful with your butane torch. Interesting. Now I have to be careful not to fuss with it too much. I'm tempted to really play around with it. But I'm just learning, so it's okay not to fuss. So the experiment I want to try on this piece is called a cylinder pour. So I've cut the bottom off a cup and I'm going to just pour my paint directly in here like this. I'm going to put the phthalo blue in, the green on top of that, the turquoise. This is a bit of an experiment. I'm using the last of the bit that's in my cups here. I'm not sure how much I need or... But this is the whole bit about learning. You have to be willing to try new things. I've got a little drizzle of gold here. And what's happening is this is all forming a circle in the middle of this piece. If I stick with this acrylic paint pouring, hopefully I will get much better. If you leave this video and go watch some videos of people who have been doing acrylic paint pouring for a while, you'll say, oh my God, that Jackie doesn't have a clue what she's doing. Look at what these people are able to do. 
and I'm getting drips all over the tile, but that's okay. Just noticed a spot on this tile that was not covered, so I'm just going to go like this because the paint will apparently the paint will continue to flow for a while. So I'm okay with that. Just letting it go and see what happens. Now, with this, see people do a process like this. And then they'll do this swirl bit sometimes. Maybe drag it off to one side or the other. Ooh, man. This is interesting. Now, I'm going to do my tilty bit here. Oh, dang, that green paint was being stubborn with me today. Got some more clumps happening here. Acrylic paint pouring is not an exact science. You just can have an idea and then see how it works out. That to me is what's so interesting. Look at the way this is just kind of flowing around. These are definitely colors that appeal to me. So I'll see once the, this dries and what I'm left with, what it inspires for embellishing with sea glass. So my apologies, for some reason the focus messed up on my camera and that last video clip and I wasn't able to show you the rest of it, but this is what I ended up with. It is quite amazing. I just can't get over all the colors and the way the paint just kind of ran together. And it created quite a neat white area here. And I was very pleased with this one as well. As I had hoped, it's predominantly that aqua green. So this one is more aqua, aqua green while this one is more white, which I'm quite happy with. So I've come outside here because I want to put this protective spray on it. It's a uh, Krylon UV resistant gloss. And I don't like to do this in the house because of the smell. So I'm just gonna give these a spray and that should protect them. Make it all a little bit more secure so the paint doesn't wash off. And then I'm going to do a little bit of sea glass embellishment on both of these. So I'll let this dry and I'll show you what I do with the sea glass and give you a good close-up view. I am just in awe of this process with acrylic paint pouring. So this painting really makes me think of crazy rough waters out in the middle of the ocean. You can see where I've got all this streaky stuff going on here and then all this swirling water taking place you got some white coming in here and some white here. You even have a little bit of purple going on here. These paintings are unreal. I find the more I look at them, the more I see. And right here, it looks like something got on the paint and made a bit of a spall in the middle of the paint. And I thought, no problem. I want to put a sailboat on here. I'm going to cover up that error or that mistake, whatever it is. I can't even tell what it is. So I picked out a piece of sea pottery that to me looks like a sail that's really struggling under the wind. And I picked out a piece of white sea glass for the hull of the sailboat. 
And I think just putting that sailboat there gives some real context to the acrylic paint pour. So this painting really speaks to me of underwater because you got all this dark paint on the bottom and then as you go towards the top it gets lighter just like it does when you're underneath the water. And so I decided what I was going to do because this is a little bit abstract in my mind but to emphasize this flowing up from the bottom of the ocean to the top of the water, I'm going to put a row of aqua-colored sea glass right in the middle of this white piece. Adds a bit more interest to the white, and it also emphasizes the flowing nature of what's going on as things are coming up from the bottom of the ocean to the top, trying to crack the surface. And I think if I go sort of on that curve, it emphasizes the curve that's happening here with the white paint. I just love this one. Of course, there's a fair amount of turquoise in this one. And as I may have mentioned, turquoise tends to be one of my favorite colors. But the fact that it's so light on top and dark on the bottom is also really interesting to me. So thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you found this video really interesting as I made a second attempt at acrylic paint pouring. And I hope you join me for my next video when I'm going to try acrylic paint pouring on rocks. So until next time, I hope you make it out to the beach and happy sea glass hunting.